Okay, now we are recording. So, um, okay, so now a few new people have shown up. Uh, more familiar faces, recognize you. Uh, so, as I said in the very beginning, this is a class, uh, wait, Let's see, but optics for energy, 5962, I think, or 5960, something like that, just check. Um, I'm recording the audio, that's why I'm wearing this for the, for the, Posted. So all the lectures will be videotaped, the screens will be grabbed, my audio will be, and it will be posted online on Canvas and also on the website. Okay, that's for the sake of new people. The big caveat for this class, as I said before, is that a lot of the lectures are remote. So just be prepared for that. If you're not comfortable with it, take the class next year, as I said, said before. Uh, which basically means I'm traveling a lot, which means that he will be here presenting and I'm going to do the lectures by video conferencing. And we can interact, you can ask questions and things like that. It works pretty well in my experience, but just be prepared for that. I'm just giving you, but I will give you the full schedule up front so you know exactly what's going to happen. Okay, because I need to have my schedule planned out completely at least for the next three or four months. Okay? Uh, so let's jump in, go through the logistics of the class today and go through the schedule and so on. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Naren, at the end of the logistics, I guess you can go talk to sure. John. Sure. Yeah. So Naren here is the TA. So if you need him, uh, his web email will be on the on the class website as well. I forgot to put it in, so, but you can always get a hold of him. But you will have a lot of uh, support. This class is uh, is very unique. Before I actually go into this, because um, although it's an engineering class, my goal is not necessarily for you to become technical experts in the field. My goal is for you to be able to perform, have the experience of, of a startup, a technical startup. That's my goal. So keep that in mind. That's a big picture. But of course, a technical startup, which means that you need to have some skills that you have to apply. Okay? Uh, technical skills. And we'll go through some basic technical skills, but I am treat me almost like a guy. I need you to be independent and really do a lot of the work yourself. And again, if you're not prepared, not comfortable with that, make sure you come talk to me after the class, or you know, we can discuss. Just be very, very clear about that. The other goal I, is that I want you to be able to work in teams. And some of you know, this is how I've talked in my previous classes. Uh, you will be assigned to small groups, maybe three or four teams, and you're gonna have to work very closely together. Um, and I would say more, almost half your grade, or more than half your grade will be determined by what comes out of that. So you have to be very, very, uh, it's a very important skill that I want you to get out of this class, which is why I emphasize this, okay? Um, and then it's a class about entrepreneurship. That's why I said it. I want you to get an experience of having a, 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 a appealing for what, what it means to do work in a startup. That's kind of my goal here. But of course, it's impossible to do in a very short class like this, but you know, we'll, we'll do our best. Okay, so let's jump in. That's kind of just a very... Okay, so my name is Rajesh Menon. I'm a professor in electrical engineering, uh, electrical computer engineering. Uh, that's my website, and I'll show you how to access the, the, the course material. lons.utah.edu. Okay, we'll go through it, and it will be online, and so on, so don't, don't worry too much about it. Much of this work is of uh, very much interest to me because this is my research. It's combining optics. I, I do many things with optics. My lab does, not personally, but... Uh, but here we're interested in applying optics to do something with energy, something interesting and unique. Okay, that's the whole idea. And it could be generation of energy, it could be uh, conservation of energy, it could be something related to conservation of materials, whatever. And it can be pretty general. Keep that in mind. Okay, so simple logistics. So we are 1460. Next week I have to adjust the class, so we will be in a slightly different lecture, but I'll go through it. And the, that's the time. Okay. Office hours. Uh, like I said before, my schedule is a little bit complicated. So if you want to meet, you can email me and we can set up something. Uh, but if you email me, I promise I'll respond pretty quickly. So that's uh, what I can say. The other thing I can also uh, suggest is that uh, you use the discussion forum in, in Canvas. I won't have time to monitor it myself, but Naren will. And if, you, if there are issues that come up that you are uh, confused about or whatever, you can, of course, also email me directly. But it's, if you want to work in a team, sometimes it's useful to discuss in, in, the, in the forum. 
and, and Narain will keep track of it. And if there are some issues that come up, he can always let me know. Or you can also let me know, obviously. So just keep that in mind. I don't have specific, but I can definitely, I'm available whenever you need me to. So email me, I'll respond. Uh, textbook, there are no te there's no textbooks because the material is very diverse, let's say. Uh, I'll provide all the notes, all the reading material. Lots of online resources will be provided for those of you who have already looked at the class website. You'll notice it. Again, that's the website. Okay, so let's, we'll go through the website later. So the goal. So what are we going to do? We're going to, uh, what's optics? Uh, optics is, in a sense, is the science and engineering of light. Uh, because we are engineers, we are interested in essentially manipulating light to do interesting things. In this case, interesting thing means doing something with energy. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, and specifically, we are interested in efficient generation of energy. So solar power is now the thing. But it could also be things like uh, efficient utilization of energy. And a good example is daylight. So could you design new kinds of windows which can take sunlight and illuminate this room? So we don't actually need to use these lights to use power. And that's a big deal. I have a project today with one of my startup companies, which is working on a solution for something like that. And the market's in the billions of dollars. Very, very big industry. Okay. So, so this is the sort of thing I want to, you to kind of widen and think about. And if you really think about it, this is not, a, a, it's not just an optics problem. You also have to think about materials. You need to think about cost. You need to think about how do you actually manufacture. So it's a very diverse skill set. Although it's an optics class, make sure you don't keep those blinders on. You need to know at least a little bit about a lot of things. Okay, that's the only way to do it. You need to, so uh, a good way to think about it. You need to know enough to be able to hire the right people to do the job. That's the real way to think about it. Okay, and that's what I want you to kind of start thinking about rather than 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 uh, equations or detailed stuff. You need to know a little bit of that as well, of course, if you do that. You need to have something, we'll come to it. So learning objectives. I've given you a bunch of objectives from a big picture point of view, but uh, generally, what, what will we do? We will uh, learn some fundamentals of optical design and engineering, which are relatively simple concepts, but very powerful concepts. So we'll, some of this you might have seen in high school physics, for example, but it'll be a good review. Okay, so we'll, we'll look at uh, geometrical optics. Uh, we'll look at what's called non-dimensional optics, which is a little bit not, it's a, it's a topic that's not usually taught, um, I would say, in uh, most uh, undergraduate or graduate classes. So we'll get into it. It's an interesting area. So we'll learn the fundamentals of optical design and engineering. We'll apply our knowledge to innovate. This is, to me, the most, the most important thing, the creativity. In other words, we'll have some under basic understanding of what's possible in physics. Okay, and then we have to pick some problem that you're interested in solving. Because without a problem, okay, you can innovate, but then it's like you're, you're creating art, right? you're whatever, you're doing something for fun, you're a mathematician. But as an engineer, you want to solve some problem, so you're trying to identify that problem, and somehow within the skill set that you've gained, you're going to try to solve that problem. And this is very vague uh, on, in purpose, and you will see what I mean. Okay, so that's really what I want you to do out of this class. And you may not succeed, that's okay. But the key is to try. That procedure is a skill set I want you to experience at the end of this class. Okay, and you will see how the, the grading is really based upon that as well. Uh, so again, the goal, my goal for you is to create new ideas that are practical, have high impact, and, and commercializable. Okay, of course, hopefully, it is rooted in some basic understanding of optical optics and engineering. Uh, which is why I'm saying this class is a little bit different, not, not necessarily for everyone. So you should think carefully. Uh, and of course, we'll also talk about some emerging technologies over, over the horizon, because it's my area of research I'm interested in what's going on. And you should also be, if you are actually interested in this field, uh, we, should think, we should think about what will happen five years down the road, 10 years down the road. So that's kind of the rough course. Those are the objectives. Hopefully, we'll meet them at the end of the semester. Okay, and and as I said before, my personal objective for you is to gain for you to gain some uh, some uh, experience of how to work in a small team to create something new, even on paper. Okay, maybe you'll build something that would be great, but even on paper. 
Okay, what are the specific topics we'll go to technically? Uh, we'll look at optical design. Um, optical design in general means designing uh, lenses or you know, any application like these or microscopes or cameras or whatever, okay? Solar concentrators, for example. That can be a lens. But in addition to those kinds of optical design, which can be thought of as imaging optics, we, are, we will also talk about what a field called non-imaging optics. Now, there is a very fundamental difference between them, and this is very interesting. Imaging optics means you are trying to form an image. In other words, you have a camera, you have a lens for a camera, you are taking a picture of some scene, you want to form the image of that scene on the sensor. And you want that to be as perfect as possible. You want it to look exactly like the scene. That's imaging optics. Okay. Mathematically, what this means is that there is a one-to-one -one, uh, mapping of every point on the scene goes to one point on the sensor. And we'll talk about this. Okay, that's imaging optics. This is something you would have learned in your high school physics. Of course, we'll talk in a little more detail in this class. Once you understand that, I want you to think about this into this field of non-imaging optics. What does that mean? Uh, what this means is that we don't really care about forming an image. We care of, about transport of light. In other words, I want to take the light from the sun and put it on a solar cell. I don't really care if, if whether an image of the sun is formed in the solar cell. I just want to transport the energy. That's the fundamental difference. Or uh, another good example is daylight. If I want to illuminate this room you know, from the sun, let's say, I don't want to form an image of the sun in this room. I want to basically illuminate this with some with some constraints from some uniformity, whatever, you know, in, in human, uh, uh, you know, within some um, illumination level that's pleasant to human beings and things like that. So that is non-imaging optics. You're thinking about transport of energy, transport of light. And we'll talk about that. And in the, <coughs> excuse me. And the way you design optics for non-imaging systems is completely, well, not completely different, quite different than when you designed for imaging optics, and it, that we'll learn about those dis, uh, differences. Um, then we have to talk about thermodynamics. So again, this is an optics class, but we will talk about thermodynamics, because without an understanding of thermodynamics, we don't really know what to do with the light. Okay, We can send a light to the photovoltaic cell, but without really understanding what does the photovoltaic cell do, does to the light, you're missing a big piece of the puzzle. You need to really understand the entire system, which means that we have to have some basic understanding of the dynamics. It's nothing too complicated, okay, but, but we will go through some basic stuff, uh, and primarily related to solar thermal systems and photovoltaic devices. Uh, then we'll also look at novel approaches to light management and photovoltaic devices, which basically means um, today, when you buy a solar panel, uh, there is a reason by the panel efficiency today that you can buy and put on your roof is about, let's say, if you buy if you pay if you buy a good panel, maybe 18 percent. Okay, whereas three years ago, if you had bought it, it would be maybe 12 percent. There is a reason for that increase of six seven percent, and that increase is related to what I can call light management. What do you what do you what can you do to the solar cell? so it can absorb sunlight more efficiently. It's a very, very big problem, very big challenge, huge industrial applications. It's, of course, a multi-billion dollar industry, uh, growing very, very fast, obviously. All, but also, interesting academically, there's a lot of very fundamental questions still being answered. Okay. So it's a very interesting topic, and we'll talk about that, and we'll have some experts come in and give some good lectures on this as well. This, by the way, is also related to LEDs. So, uh, of course, we're talking about energy, light imaging devices, uh, light uh, diodes, sorry, uh, are very important from an energetic point of view because they're much more efficient than the, you know, incandescent lamps. They are fluorescent lamps here, which are a little more efficient. But um, LEDs are very important. But there are some very fundamental things you can do in terms of light management on how you extract light out of LEDs. And it turns out there are some interesting uh, physical analogies between how you trap light inside for solar cells and you extract light outside for LEDs. And there was some very important work uh, actually uh, out of uh, Berkeley a couple of years ago uh, uh, pointing out this equivalence. So it's very, very new, very, very recently people appreciating these sort of things. We'll talk a little bit about that. 
Uh, and there are a few other emerging areas, areas of uh, new kinds of uh, photovoltaic devices, organic solar cells, luminescent concentrators, and things like that. We'll look at those things as well. So um, let me see. So le let me actually, before I go on, stop and ask if you have any questions at this point. I'm sure you have lots of questions, but so I think you have anything specific, yeah. So for the, for the design works? Yes. Um, so I look up the previous years, they are actually designed some actual product, mm -hmm. like uh, solar cell panels or something yeah. like that. But for this year, because you are going to travel around, we have to, you know, is, is it like optional things? Yeah, so actually design the real product, or we can just theoretically yeah. say. Yeah, so that's a good question. So uh, the quick, quick answer is that it's, it's optional. It was always optional, by the way. It, it was mandatory in the previous classes that they could build. It's up to the team. So some teams decided they had such a great idea. They were very excited about it. They went and built a prototype. And I would encourage that because it's it's a great experience, the packing something together. And it's not expensive. One of the years I actually had some funds to actually pay for it. This year I don't have, I can't pay for it unfortunately, so you're going to have to either get some free stuff or go on Craigslist or whatever, find something cheap or eBay or whatever, if you want to do it. Again, like I said, it's, not, it's completely optional. I would encourage it because it's a good experience. We'll talk about that. Yeah. By the way, I, whether I'm here or not, I didn't actually build it myself. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I'll talk about that also. Yeah, on the logistics. Okay, uh, if there are no questions, let's go to grading. It's of course important uh, for us. So the grading is again very specific and very upfront here. So we have one midterm. It's already scheduled for October sixth in class here. Uh, it's thirty percent of the grade. Okay, so it'll it'll cover whatever we learn until then, and it's in the schedule. We'll go It's, uh, it's, uh, it's during the class, so it's an hour and 15 minutes or whatever. Okay. And then we have team-based projects. Everything else comes from team-based projects. So I'm going to assign, depending upon how many students are here, I'll assign you two teams, and we'll talk about that today. Uh, maybe three or four, depends on how many students are there. And you're going to do the team-based project. Now, there are two aspects to the assignments for the team-based project. One is presentations in class. So each team will make short presentations one, approximately once a month. So there are four presentations. Okay? And each presentation is about 10% of the grade, and that's team-based. And I'll tell you how I'll distinguish between the team members later on. The first one is September 22nd. It's already scheduled. Okay? And we'll talk about what those need to be. There's no other homework in the class. Um, the second part of the team-based project is at the end of the semester, I need you to prepare a very, very short three-page business plan, okay, which covers certain specific topics. I'll talk about that. And something which is called a business canvas. And we'll learn what that is along the way. Uh, and you will learn the importance of that. And I won't go into much detail now. It's a little bit detailed. Uh, complex, but anyway, that constitutes 30% of the grade. Okay, any, and I'm sure there are questions. No? Everyone's clear? Oh, that's great. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, so the, these team presentations will be, I'm guessing, will be prepared out of the class? Or yes, exactly. Do you have an estimate of like how much time it is? Because ah. I'm down in physics, which is a little far away. Uh, sorry, could you say? You're in physics? I'm in physics, but yeah. so I'm like... Right, that's not that far. Yeah. <laughs> I want that. Yeah. And anyway, like, so meeting, like, you know, yeah. I don't know So, so my, my suggestion, so uh, I actually, it's hard to tell because it depends on the team, depends on the project and so on. But my uh, recommendation is that use the forum on, uh, on Canvas. Okay. So a lot of the stuff you can do online. Uh, you know, discussion. But of course, my uh, recommendation is don't do everything online. Make sure you talk face to face because you know the brainstorming and things like that. It really, really helps. Um, my guess would be one hour, two hours a week at most. I don't think it should take longer than that. Maybe one hour a week is what I would say. 
Yeah, but again, it depends very much on the team, what you want to do, you know, what, what your project is and things like that, how you want to divide the jobs. Again, I'm very hands-off about all this. I'm only going to give you a very broad outline. You need to drive this yourself to some extent. With these. Of course, I'm, I'm, if you're stuck, I'm here. But, you know. The presentation part, is it like uh, individually that's a, that's a great question. No, the presentations are a, a team based, so you really you need to work together. It's it's in, and this is not to not to penalize any of you. I'm telling you, this is how the real world works. Now, I've, I've I've started three companies. I've done it many times, and I can tell you, you will succeed or fail based on how well you can work. And it's okay if you know if there are conflicts or it doesn't work well. It's okay. It happens. I want you to experience that. Now, how will you get individual, uh, how will I be able to get individual members? You will be assigned technical mentors, and we'll talk about that. And uh, they're going, they are all senior PhD students. So I know some of you are probably PhD students. So the technical mentors have some experience, they've all taken the class before, they're, you know, they're in this field. They will help you with some of this stuff. Uh, in fact, I'll show you exactly what they'll do. But they were going to give me some feedback, so make sure you interact very, very clear, clearly with them as well. And of course, if you have any concerns and questions, again, my goal here is not to penalize anyone. I'd be, I would be perfectly happy if everyone got A's. But I can't, you know, obviously you send them out, but, so you need to work for it. Uh, for me, personally, the most important thing is that you got something out of the class. More than the technical. The technical stuff we've learned, you're not smart, you're engineers, so physicists, I mean, that's... That's a given to me. That's okay. That's fine. That's minimum. I want you to get something more. Okay. That's what counts. Uh, okay. Let's. Ah, uh, let's go through the schedule. If there are no more questions. So grading is. Uh, I've been as upfront as clear as possible. So if anyone has any questions, you gotta complain today. Tell me. Okay. You can of course email me. But I'm trying to be as as upfront as possible here. So, so to get to the uh, to the course website, other than Canvas, okay. Oops, that's not there. Um, of course, all of this will also be on Canvas, just so you know. But uh, if you want to go to the course website, so I'll start from the beginning. So, lons.utah.edu is my website. You go to courses, okay. And the first one on the list is the Optics for Energy Fall 2016. You can click on that. You'll get the, everything. Okay, everything will be here. So if you want to check anything, I will check here first. Most importantly, announcements. Okay, I will make these announcements of anything important up here as soon as I can. So I'm going to make an announcement right now that the lecture on August 30th, which is next Tuesday, has to be moved to Wednesday, August 31st. Uh, because I, unfortunately, I didn't realize this, but I have to be in Washington, D.C. that day. So, 31st is the lecture, and I know I didn't have time to clear with you guys, so sometimes you might miss it, but we'll record everything. And if you have questions, of course, you can email me. August 31st, uh, and it will be in a different uh, classroom, WEB 2470, same time. Okay? And Narain, you should make sure that everything works there. And that will be a remote lecture. So. How soon after the um, new lectures you do have to be I'm hoping the same day. I'm hoping, yeah. Because I have other classes at the same time. I won't be able to attend them. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I mean, I'm okay if you if you can't. Yeah, as long as you feel like you're getting something out of the class. Now, if you're not, I would recommend you drop it. I mean, otherwise, don't waste your time, right? I mean, I know you, so as I'm telling you. Don't, don't feel bad about dropping the class, because to me, the most important thing is you get something out of it. If you're wasting your time, then, you know, why, why do it, right? You should do something else. Um, the second announcement is that the lecture on September 1st uh, has to start at a s different time. Same classroom. Unfortunately, I have to be on another conference call um, with, with DARPA actually comes out uh, until about 1 o'clock. So I guess you can't see it there, but I have to change it to 1.10. 1.10 to 2.10. Next Thursday. Uh, and apologize, but... I, unfortunately, it's, it's a little difficult with my schedule, but, but I'll post everything. Okay, so all the, all the materials are here. So you can kind of read through all the stuff. It's, it's all the same. 
what we just talked about, the grading stuff, and the, the, the College of Engineering grading policies in there, if you want to take a look. Um, yeah, like I said, many of the lectures are conducted remotely, which means that you can either watch, you know what I mean, you can watch it at home if you want, but uh, I won't, you won't be able to video conference it from home, in other words, you can't talk to me. But if you're here, you can ask questions, and we will have brainstorming sessions and so on. So I would highly recommend you come, basically, you know. Um, office hours, okay, textbook, okay. Schedule, so let's go through it quickly. So today is an overview of the class. Okay, I need to speed up. Um, we'll talk about some basic stuff. Thursday, we're going to talk about some project topics. And my main goal here is to give you an inkling of some of the problems that I have thought about. Uh, but this, this doesn't in any way mean that you need to pick those. This is for, for me to spark your thinking, to think about problems for your projects, okay? Uh, that's Thursday. Then uh, next week, like I said, we move it to, uh, when it's red, remember, it's something different than usual, so that's Wednesday. Ch uh, we're going to talk about solar radiation, the basics of solar radiation. Uh, September 1st, next Thursday, again, the time has changed, just watch it here. Basic thermodynamics. And for each uh, lecture, by the way, I have a lot of uh, resources down here. I would recommend you click on it and look at them. Some of them are videos that you can watch. Some of them are articles you can read. Most of them are very relevant and very current. So I'm uh, uh, very uh, interested in current research. So some of this, and I try to make it as accessible as possible for you, so I highly recommend taking a quick look at it. Okay. Some of this is very interesting. By the way, I read something today, which I want well, I can talk about later, but there was an article today where they developed a, a solar thermal device which um, uh, doesn't use any optics, basically. So it basically is like a sponge that absorbs sunlight and heats up some st uh, water inside it and creates steam. And it, it was cool, but I'll make a post of it later. Anyway, let's go through this quickly. So uh, then September 6th, which is the following week, we'll go through geometrical optics. There are two lectures here. It'll be uh, done by one of my PhD students. Then the following week, we have optical design for recycling, which is basically a new uh, approach of uh, optical engineering used for recycling resources. Very, very important, very uh, topical uh, area. September 15th, we'll have a, a tutorial on light tools. Light tools is an important simulation software that you will all have access to which, uh, for free, which is amazing, by the way, for one year because of this class, um, thanks to the, the, the commercial vendor. Uh, it's a tool that you can use to simulate optical systems, including solar concentrators, whatever, daylighting systems, all that kind of stuff. So I recommend that. Uh, September 20th, we will essentially have an open class. My goal there is to make sure everyone's, all, I want to spend time, and we'll be here, but I want to spend time with the project teams to make sure where you are on your projects. Okay, because I know it's the first assignment. I want to, I want to make sure there's no stuff, or if there are any other questions and concerns, we'll spend some time. Um, September 22nd is the, is the first assignment, presentation, and I'll talk about what those are in a second. Uh, in the next few slides, the, it's, first we'll talk about the literature review, which is what, what you're... Don't worry too much about what the assignments are, I'll tell you exactly what they are in the next few slides. Let's just go through the schedule. Then we'll go through the fundamental concepts of non-imaging optics, um, which we'll spend one week on, two lectures. Then we have the midterm, okay? So we have a midterm review, so this is the midterm. Okay, we'll have a midterm review on October 4th, um, and then we have the midterm on October 6th. So everything before that, before it's covered. Okay, then we have fall break. Then after fall break, we'll go through radiometry and photometry, which basically is very important because it's a different way to do measurements in solar, solar uh, energy, or in, in non-imaging optics in general. Then we'll start thinking about commercialization. So up to then, it's very te fairly technical. Uh, 20th of October, we'll have a guest lecture from the Technology Commercialization Venture, sorry, Technology and Venture Commercialization Office of the University of Utah. It's a very, very important resource that all of you have access to as students. And I want you to know what it means. I know most students have no idea what, what it does. But it's an amazing resource that you actually have access to. To file patents, for companies, to market research, whatever. So we'll have a lecture, lecture from them. Um, 25th, we'll talk about the business model canvas. I'm not going to go into it right now. It is related to your commercialization plan. It is basically a way. So forming a startup, 
means that you need to have someone who write, who will pay for your whatever product or service, which means that you need to find that someone. Okay, and that's the whole idea of the business canvas. In other words, you will talk to customers. Very important, very, very different than what you think about as engineers. So we'll, we'll do some of that. And that's actually an actual exercise in class. We'll do as teams. Okay. Um, in addition to off-class work, there's a little bit of work there related to that because you will have to, so we'll do what's called a preliminary canvas in class. At the end of the semester, you're going to submit a final canvas and you will really, you know what I mean. They will change from beginning to end and you, you will hopefully get some insights into how it works. October 27th, we have the second presentation, so again once a month. So that's your team innovation, I'll talk about it later. So, uh, November 1st, you have statistical ray optics. This is a very important area for uh, how the efficiency of solar panels have increased. Like I said before, light management and photovoltaics. We'll talk about some, some mathematics there. Uh, review of solar cells, or so basic physics of solar cells. Uh, we'll have light trapping for photovoltaics, light extraction for LEDs. I mentioned these uh, anti reflection coatings. And um, I'll talk about the mentors in a second, so let's ignore that for the time being. Uh, then November 17th is kind of your final technical presentation. It's your third presentation. You can either do like a build out, which basically means you hacked something together, you brought it to show, or you took a video of it working outside, or, or you go, you know, one of the years, you, you know, two, or two teams had something, you went outside into the sun and did some interesting demos. Uh, you don't have to do it. Again, completely optional. Most you, most teams do some analysis and paper, some 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 uh, explanation like that, simulations, and things like that. Uh, November twenty second, we have some uh, something on spectrum splitting. I'm not going to talk about that. Then uh, Thanksgiving, then we have luminescent concentrators, measurement of photovoltaics, the concentrator photovoltaics, and the last day we have the assignment four, which is the business plan commercialization presentation. Okay. Now, each presentation, therefore, for each team is short. I don't know exactly how long, I'll let you know, it depends on the number of teams, but about 10 minutes. So, I'm not talking about very long, it has to, you have to be very clear, very short, it's succinct. And then the final assignment, like I said, is due Friday, December 9th, which is the business plan, I'll tell you exactly what needs to be there, and the business plan, final plan. Okay? Any questions? I know there's a lot of stuff here, but I'm trying to be as, as uh, clear as possible up front because it's a very different kind of class than you might be used to. Okay, there are no questions, let's keep going. Project, so the teams, as I said before, will be assigned by me. My goal is by September 1st, which is next, next week. So if you're, if you're planning to drop the class, let me know earlier than later. And again, no problem. I would recommend you know, if you're not comfortable, feel free to drop the class. I have no problem. With that. It's a little too big for me. I like the smaller classes anyway. But you know, having said that, I'm not going to discourage anyone. You know, take the class, obviously. Yeah. But you know, if, you're, if you don't think it's not a good fit because I'm not here, or if you feel like you're not comfortable, you know, just take it next year, right? So, uh, so we'll talk about project topics briefly, uh, project deliverables, uh, which are the two project deliverables, the, the team presentations, the business plan, plans. okay? So let's jump, jump in a little bit into the project topics. The topics, again, it's up to you. Uh, I'm not gonna, I'm, I won't uh, give you topics. You have to pick yourself. I'll give you examples of potential topics. So, uh, you know, things like solar cookers, you know, and you will see there's still a lot of innovation happening, could be done. Uh, solar water pasteurization, we'll talk briefly about that. Solar water desalination, I think it's very, very important, uh, extremely important in the technology waiting to happen. Solar refrigeration, daylighting, we talked about it. Solar water heating, and of course, we will take. So lots of different things, but different flavors of similar sort of things. You have some optics involved, lots of solar involved, lots of energy involved. In one of the years, one of the students actually uh, <clears throat> one of the groups actually designed a system to do uh, recycling of materials. And it wasn't very much related to optics, but it was okay because they made it something very interesting. So that's okay. So if you think that's something, but you have to convince me if you do something like that, obviously, right? So we got to talk. Another super post, I can say. 
Um, I want you to think very carefully, not only about the technical part, but also about things that make sense if you're trying to make a product, right? Cost, durability, if you want this to work out in the desert, in, in Afghanistan, whatever, you know, it needs to survive, so you gotta think about that. Uh, storage, space requirements, does it need to be shipped across the world? Cultural factors, we'll talk briefly about that, ease of use, climate conditions, whether it's in the desert or in Antarctica, whatever. You know. So the presentation, so this is important, so let's go through it in detail, make sure you're clear. Uh, what do we need? 10% each, but each presentation. September 22nd is the first one. First one is basically a literature review. So by next week, you would have formed a team, and I hopefully you would have picked the topic, okay? Which means that the rest of the, you got about three weeks to do a literature review of that particular topic or a problem that you have selected, okay? Pros, cons of existing solutions. Um, comparisons between existing solutions. Um, te not technical comparison, cost comparison, any other thing related to that. Overview of existing technologies. That's approximately what I expect. A landscape of what exists today. And if you tell me it doesn't exist, uh, for example, like the iPhone did not exist when Steve Jobs brought it out, it's okay, but you need to really be convinced <coughs> that this problem is important, okay? But your, your goal is to lay out the landscape, the problem, what solutions exist, and what do you think, you know, you could improve? I mean, that's a little bit, you don't need to really do that quite yet, but this is the landscape. October 22nd is the next presentation. It's really your idea, your innovation. So you have about a month. I want you, of course, brainstorming within your team, come up, you know, pick a few problems, pick one, two, three problems, I want to solve these three problems, or even one problem, and this is how I'm going to solve it. And again, it doesn't need to be fully fleshed out, so you can be as creative as you want, you can take a lot of risk, uh, it can be very expensive, it doesn't matter. Okay, or you can have one problem and two, three, one, two, three solutions, and you say, okay, you know, these are ideas, let's see what happens. That's the goal. Okay, so that, that's your idea to be, that's your opportunity to be creative. In November 17, so you're about a, about a month, maybe three and a half weeks, the idea is to flesh out the technical details of your idea, which means you do simulations, calculations, analysis, whatever, and build out if you want uh, for demo. But at the very least, some analysis. Okay, that I assume will be kind of a busy time. Uh, because, yeah, well, you'll be done with your midterm, so. But anyway, before Thanksgiving. Number four is the business plan and commercialization plan. Again, you have a couple of weeks to finish that. That, I don't think, would be too big. That's good experience. Okay, any questions? No? Okay, okay, yeah. So on the syllabus set, so we term at 30%. And then the whole presentation is 40%? Yeah, 10% each. Yeah. yeah, and then it says uh, business canvas and analysis and the business plan will be 30%. Yeah. So the business plan commercializes the course presentation. Oh, no, no. There's a final, uh, final submission. So if you look, if you look at the website, there is a, a two things. So remember, this is the presentation. Oh. And there is, but there, I want you to submit something. Gotcha. Okay, it's a document basically, and and, and, and a few things actually. That's my next thing. Let's see. Yes. So business plan canvas actually that's, that was next time. So what are we gonna do? Uh, there are uh, some. Examples over there, so I recommend looking at it. Not yet, but when we get to it, we'll talk more about it. At the U, uh, there's something very new that just got started. I was told about this only a couple, a month or so ago. Something called the Lausanne Center has a program called Get Seated, and you can look at it. Oops, it's right there. Um, this is essentially an opportunity where you get to present your idea for a startup, or whatever, to a group of investors, and they put in some money, and you get free money, you get to do something interesting if you want, uh, optional, not mandatory at all, but recommended. I think uh, they ha they actually have this every month, but um, it's a rolling submission. I think if you are interested as a team, I think November 3rd is kind of your best shot to do it. 
to uh, application. Again, it's optional. Our class deadline, obviously, is December 9th, as I said, that's mandatory. What do you need to submit? You need to submit two pages of an executive summary, which covers the following. Uh, we'll talk about these, by the way, which, as an engineer, I did not know what these meant. It took me some time to learn, so we'll learn this, hopefully. Uh, what the opportunity is, what is the go-to-market strategy, what is the market industry, you know, size, analysis, what are the key players. Technical product description, I put that in red because that's, of course, most important for this class. We are engineers, after all. Uh, some risks, economics, and some, some background on the team. So that's one, two pages. I need you to make a small video pitch. Uh, shorter the better, this is the elevator pitch. Five minutes is too long, I can tell you already. So in less than five is what I said. Uh, you can be creative, it can be a product demo, it can be an elevator pitch, it can be a slide presentation, it can be someone talking, whatever. And you can see examples of all of this, by the way, on my website from previous classes. So some of the students actually did some interesting stuff. You can take a look at them. They're all on YouTube. Basically, we uploaded everything on YouTube. And finally, if you have any intellectual property that you think can be patented, you can do an IP declaration and things like that. And that's a good, good practice, even if you don't go through it, if you want. Yeah. That's it. Uh, the next thing is the business canvas. So there's a business plan and canvas. The canvas uh, basically is something we'll talk about, so don't worry too much about it right now. It's something, it's a, basically a big form that we're going to do together as teams. Okay. So it's relevant to whatever your innovation is. Okay, this is very important. Each team will be assigned a technical mentor who is a subject matter expert and a business mentor who has an expertise in commercialization. And you're going to meet with each of these mentors as a team uh, three times. Now I'll tell you exactly when, and you need to schedule it based on your schedule. It's kind of, and I'm not scheduling this because there, there's too many people involved, so you have to do it yourself, the team and the mentor. Uh, each technical mentor you'll meet three times. The mentor is supposed to give you guidance. Uh, the commercialization mentor also you, you, you meet with three times as well. And take advantage of the opportunity to interact with the mentors. The mentors are supposed to give you feedback, help you brainstorm, guide the whole process. So, so really take advantage of it. Especially the commercialization mentors have a lot of expertise in thinking about these things. So really take advantage of this opportunity. Now, um, okay, before I go to this, let's just show you what I have in mind about the schedule for the meeting with the mentors. So let's see. So I put things like this. So I said teams meet with technical mentors this week. Okay, you see that there? So, which basically means any time this week, second week of September, you can email and you need to schedule a meeting, one hour meeting with the mentor. Talk to them, figure out where, explain where you are and they're supposed to give you feedback and guide you on your project, okay? So you're gonna meet that week and I'm going to assign the mentors too, by the way. And, uh, wait, where's my mouse? Um, Then here, so after right after fall break, so that's the next meeting, and then there's a meeting the first week of second week of November. Okay, so three meetings with the technical mentors, and that will help you f finalize the final assignment, technical assignment. The commercialization mentors you will meet with them starting the first week of November. Okay, so that's because that's when you start thinking about the business plan and things like that. Uh, again, one hour, and you have to schedule it. Uh, and you have another meeting the second week of November, and one last meeting on the last week of November. Okay? And it's important that you do this because I, I'm going to ask them for feedback for grading. Oops. That's okay. Okay. Uh, any questions before we go into this? So that was kind of the logistics of the class. It was a lot of stuff. Uh, so I'm going to be very clear. No? Okay. So I'm going to now maybe turn it on. <laughs> okay. So let's talk a little bit about some technologies of interest for the class. So first of all, uh, I'm particularly interested in how could we apply our skills to impact the most number of people as possible. 
So it basically translates into how do we apply these technologies in the developing world. Um, now, of course, your projects don't need to do that, but I'm gonna, that's what we're going to talk about in the rest of this lecture today, just for some various reasons. The most important thing I would say is that there are, there are very abundant solar resources with uh, very little access to infrastructure. So obviously, you can look at the equatorial belt. I mean, the, there's huge amounts of solar energy, but there's very little electricity connections, interconnections, roads, and things like that. So obviously, building solar cells, or solar hot water systems, or desalination, or refrigeration, all this stuff can have a huge impact. So that's one. Uh, Biomass turns out to be the biggest resource in most of these places, which basically means uh, wood and things like that, or you know, dead, dead wood, or cut wood, or whatever, grass, things like that. They're very fast at cleaning, obviously, and uh, contributes to CO2 emissions. So when they're burned, uh, it creates lots of, and, and lots of health problems as well. So you know, I think these can be solved going to renewables. Uh, there's a very huge impact possible. One out of every four people have no access to electricity, so we can make a very, very big impact. Uh, and, and not only that, I think there are very large, and there are companies which are doing this, huge job market opportunities to build sustainable technological uh, solutions as well. So, so I want to also, uh, so we, as, a, as a design project, when you think about this, you may also want to think, if you are interested in addressing a market in, in Asia or Africa, you know, what is important there? Durability, cost, I mean, all of these are important, but you also need to incorporate that into the way you do your innovation because uh, that's why it's, uh, it, this is important. So let's talk a little bit about solar cooking. Now it turns out to be, and that's the example I want to talk about in the rest of this lecture. Uh, first, let's see if this will play. Uh, first of all, let, let me just make a quick point that solar cooking is of course uh, ancient, has been around a long time, uh, very simple, but still could be innovated upon. And that's what I want you to think about. Let's start with something so simple, and let's see what could we do with it. Okay, that's the goal. I'm gonna start with, let's see if this video plays. Okay, let me, it's playing in my headphones, so. So I'm gonna, disconnect that for a second. <laughs> Getting those rays of the sun onto a pot right inside of the oven and raising the temperature by the conversion of the sun's rays into heat energy. And usually most solar cookers will have a glass cover, transparent cover, used to trap the heat in so that it will continue to build on itself and raise the temperature to cooking levels. Boiling temperature is 212 degrees. Anything above that will cook your food, no problem at all. Um, the reason for the uh, reflector panels is because just laying something or setting something out in the sun won't get it quite hot enough. Even though it's a really hot day outside, it still can get it very hot. So with a box cooker, such as the sun oven here, they use insulation and a oven interior, just like your home oven, to put the food inside and then capture the heat and raise the temperature gradually until you have it as high as uh, anywhere 350 degrees, 400 degrees in some of these. Over here, we have a panel cooker. Also uses a reflector system to um, reflect the rays and concentrate them to a certain point, which is the pot here. And it also uses the greenhouse effect where you trap the heat inside of an enclosed um, space, this acting as the lid, just like on the, the sun oven, and it will gradually increase the temperature to where you can boil and cook any type of food that you desire inside here. And the next kind of cooker, after the box cooker and the panel cooker, would be the parabolic cooker. A little specialized cooker here. It's uh, also known as a concentrator cooker. Um, I'll probably stand in front of it because I might be blacked out with the, the light there. But uh, the concentrator cooker concentrates the heat into one small point right under here and raises the temperature high enough that you can boil and fry foods. This one works a little bit differently than a panel cooker or a box cooker. 
because it does not trap the heat inside of an enclosed area. The heat is concentrated right under a small spot. Of course, inside the pan, with the water or the oil or whatever it is you're cooking, the heat will be trapped inside if you use a lid on it. But you can cook without a lid on these. It's not necessary to have it on. In fact, this uh, cup of water that I put on here is already boiling. It's been about uh, three minutes, is it? <laughs> and it's already boiling inside of here. Um, concentrator cookers are a little more hands-on. You can't leave them. Um, give you a little idea here about how hot a concentrator cooker can get, or a parabolic as they're called. Took about uh, three seconds to get that paper started on fire. Probably about 800 degrees under here. Um, you have to be a little more careful with these. You can't just leave it and go off and leave it unattended like you would with a solar oven or a solar panel cooker. That's what most people like about the solar panel cooker and the solar box cooker is that you can leave it more unattended and just let it cook all day long. Uh, parabolic, you have to be here on top. Treat it like a stove top. It's just as hot. Unless you have a smaller parabolic, then it wouldn't be quite as hot. The larger the parabolic, the hotter it'll get. Um, it's not something that you can let kids just uh, play around with because you can get burnt with these and you can also uh, get blinded if you... Uh, let the reflection hit your eye at the right angle. Um, this is boiling very heavily in here already. Um, to turn it off, just turn it away so the heat spot isn't on the uh, on the uh, pot anymore. One thing you'll notice about a parabolic cooker too, I'm not using a dark colored pot like you would in a, in a box cooker or a panel cooker. And the reason is because the heat's so intense under here that you don't need that black or dark colored uh, pot to attract the heat and raise the temperature. If you have a heavy duty pot that's black, that's fine, you can use that, there's no problem. Do not use aluminum on these because it gets so hot they start to scorch and burn right through them. So that's how a parabolic uh, cooker works also. This is the uh, Cantina West solar burner. The one over there that we talked about before is the hot pot and then the sun oven, which you're familiar with all. So this is the solar burner here. This is the other cooker that we also are a dealer for here. Okay, let me turn this back on. So you have a flavor for three different... Okay. Three different kinds of cookers, okay? So they, they exist, the, the key difference, as you can imagine, has to do with the optics, right? the way you had them, he had them set up. Okay, so let's start to something extremely simple, a solar box cooker. What, what does it do? It's basically, uh, essentially a box, it's, it's insulated, okay, it's in, in this case it's enclosed in a clear plastic uh, or glass. Um, very simple construction, there's a reflector that reflects the light in, in, in addition to the direct sunlight. Uh, there's insulation to make sure the light doesn't so you escape, so you get some kind of green, greenhouse effect. Slow, even cooking, uh, safe and easy to use. So, you know, simple. Uh, you can have this, we saw before, panel cooker. There's no inner box, so obviously there's no insulation, and you can escape, heat can escape. Uh, reflector panels, simplest and least expensive. Unfor uh, of course, unstable in high winds, but it's easy to transport because you can make it flat. So, that's why it's here. It doesn't reach any heat with cloudy. Uh, the parabolic cooker you saw, very high temperatures, very quick, cooks very quickly, needs sun tracking. You saw when you moved it out, I'm sure it doesn't cook this anymore. Uh, more complex, expensive, risk of fire sensor. Okay, I want you to think about these three. First of all, um, let's see. Get into, I'm going to turn on the light. I want to spend a few minutes, I want you to brainstorm to tell me how you would improve these cookers. I mean, or solar cooking in general, I suppose it doesn't need to be these. And I want you to. Like three of you to talk together and come closer. <laughs> and maybe three of you, three of you, two of you, three of you, and two of you. Now come around. Just a few minutes. Th think carefully about the what you saw and how could you make it better? Like for, just a very simple example. I'll let you think for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, I Could you make it? Because the sun moves, you know how the sun is going to move. But it depends on how you construct your Yeah. Yeah, but, but uh, that's, a, that's a great point. So that tells you what your customer base is. Who will use this? We won't use it at home, but who will use this? No, 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 we'll use the solar cooker. Oh, yeah. I mean, the So if you're not hiking, you don't want to carry this stuff, maybe. Or if you're in the developed world, that's all you have. Take it a little more. I mean, I'm just giving you a question. Sorry, you're saying Oh, what we're saying is like, so, so I mean, we definitely improve the portability of any of these by Yeah. So, so we're tracking, uh, as we have mentioned this, too, it's a very, very interesting uh, area. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about it, but trackers in general can be robotics, right, like machines, but it can also be very simple, like a, like a clock. And you can have a spring-loaded system because they're always going the same way. And in, and in between, but also very simple ways people are thinking about how a sunflower follows the sun. Now, it's only very recently people understood how that happens. It has to do with some chemical uh, uh, organic molecules that turn their conformation based on sunshine. They, they degree in the sun, the green in the sun, actually. And when it changes conformation, it actually changes the, sh the shape of the molecule. And if enough of the molecules change, they actually shift. And there are companies which are trying to commercialize things like that. So the idea there is that you don't use any energy. You don't use the sun's energy directly to track. So there's lots of very interesting innovation happening in the tracking which you don't even think about as well. So that's again, that's an example of why you, know, you need to kind of know lots of different things to kind of solve a particular problem. So tracking could be a problem, you could work on it. Any other interesting ideas before we go on? And to add something? We're talking a lot about the, um, in, in, for example, the solar oven or the panel oven, uh, focusing on the panels and either minimizing the absorption and transmission, so or I guess maximizing the reflection, yeah. or also reducing the cost of those materials. Yeah, yeah. those are extremely important. I agree. We'll talk about that. So. Oh, yeah, come on. You guys, uh, yeah, we're, we're a little uh, running behind, so wait. Is someone else coming? Uh, I think we'll just call him now. Shower. Can you go find them? Do you mind? No. You have a few minutes. OK. Um, so the, oh, I'm running out. I'm too slow, so I have to skip a few things. OK. So their lens cooker is very similar to me. The, uh, it's similar to a, a parabolic, but it's in transmission. And I want to just. It's a flat piece of glass, uh, or plastic, by the way. You might have seen this in the overhead projectors, which you don't see anymore, but 
Uh, if you look at that piece of plastic, it has little uh, grooves on it, and this is a, what's called a Fresnel lens. It's a flat lens, okay? And it focuses light. Okay, in the projector, it's used to, to project an image like this. But what they do is take that, sun comes in, it forms a focal spot, just like a big lens would. But of course, if you take a huge lens, instead of this flat lens, it would be heavy, right? It would be thick. I can imagine, I mean, a lens like this, I mean, it would be big. You don't want to do that because you have to track the sun and all that. So this is flat. It's nice. There's a nice video there. I, I, I won't go into it in detail. But what he does, it's an interesting hack, is that he found a, 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 a TV on the side of the road. Someone had abandoned it. And he took, takes it apart. And it has a tornado that's inside it. And he takes it and builds a solar cooker out of it. That's pretty interesting. I'll, I'll link to it. So anyway, that's a good hack. So some principles of solar cooking you need to understand, which is outside of it, so maybe relevant to optics or solar, you need to think about. Is for example, it's a greenhouse effect, okay, heat gain. So visible light from the sun passes the transparent uh, the, the plastic or glass on top, and it's uh, you know, absorbed by the black uh, part. The black part is a black body. Of course, it will radiate as well, as we know from high school physics. The, but it radiates at longer wavelengths, and we'll talk about this next week. The longer wavelengths, if you select this material just right, will be reflected, not transmitted. So in other words, the longer wavelengths will be trapped. So that's a greenhouse effect. Of course, on our planet, this is uh, done by the clouds, or pollution, and things like that, right? Carbon dioxide, and things like that. But in a, in a small enclosure, that's what happens. The absorbed energy, then, this must be conducted to the food to, to to be, to be used efficiently. So heat gain uh, also depends upon the glass orientation. You can have a situation like this or a situation like this. Uh, so yeah, which parts will receive more sunlight? Yeah, box two because it's got a bigger surface area. I mean, you could. So the way, by the way, to think about how you get this is look at the. Uh, so you can look at. The but first is you can look at the surface that is corresponding to the rays that are the extreme rays, right? There's a ray that enters the system here. There's a ray that enters the system here. Assuming these things are reflective, so the ray that hits the system here bounces around. So you look at the extreme rays and look at the cross section, which is this line. And in this case, the extreme rays here, the extreme rays here, look at the cross section, it gets bigger. Simple way to think about it. Now, which box has more losses? Yeah. The box two. two, yeah. Why? Because it has a wider angle for reflection. Yeah, it's got a higher surface area to radiate the heat out. So it's not just the gain, you also need to think about the losses. Where is the energy going out as well? Okay. Uh, you can also use reflectors to increase the gain, so you can have a single reflector, you get all these rays coming in. You get two reflectors, you get all these rays coming in, you get more, capture more of the Okay? Now, can someone tell me what's the disadvantage of this? Can anyone recognize the disadvantage? You don't have a focus light? Well, both of them don't have focus light. I'm saying, com be compare between these two. Of course, I'm saying here that by using two reflectors, this is better, right? Because I'm getting more light. But can anyone recognize a disadvantage of doing that? It's bulkier. Oh, yeah, it's bulkier. That's a good point. Yeah, I wasn't thinking about that. That's yeah. true. You're right. If you only have one direction. Yeah. Exactly. This, the sun starts moving. I need to tr somewhat track it because I'll start shadowing on one side. Whereas here, if the sun starts moving, I still get some more. So it's interesting, you know, you need to think from a system level point of view, okay? I'm trying to take simple examples and giving you ways to, uh, uh, hopefully you'll think about applying it in your project. Very, very simple ideas, but very impactful ideas. Um, how would you increase this gain? I mean, I'm not going to ask you to do a full brainstorming in the interest of time, because I want to go through the interest, but any, any ideas? You can track, obviously, but other than that, You can make it bigger, yeah, sure. Yeah, so you collect more of the light. Anything else? Well, I think of the angle, but uh, on the top of it, you can have another uh, 
Yeah, not exactly the same material, but uh, another reflector, you mean? Yeah, but uh, the angle mm -hmm. will be under this. Yes, one. very good. Yeah, that's excellent. Yes. Yeah, we will come to this. This is what's called a compound parabolic concentrator. We'll talk about this. Yes. But so intuition is good. Mathematical proof. This is the right way to do it. So his point was that why not? Why not? Have more reflectors, not just we only have two. Yeah, why not put more? Add more. It's like a funnel more light. It turns out this is very important, and this is actually quite important in many, many industries. We'll talk about this. But maybe the other ideas as well. I was actually thinking about I, I didn't have any answers, I was just asking you, you know, because creative uh, people have ideas. Okay. Heat loss is, of course, extremely important, like I said, it's not just a gain. Heat loss occurs by conduction. No, there's, there's conductive heat loss. You can have radiation. You can have convection. Convection and radiation, the difference, as you probably know, radiation means that it can go through vacuum. You don't need anything. But convection means some gas, air, that conducts the heat away. So the key things in this very simple system, the absorber plate is insulated from the bottom of the cooker, in other words, you don't necessarily want to lose the heat here into the bottom, essentially into the ground or whatever. So you want to have some insulation here. In this case, it's just air or some plate here. Uh, radiant heat is trapped by the container. As I said before, the longer, wave, longer wavelengths are reflected by the top here. The heated air may leak through gaps uh, through convection. So that's a convection loss. And like uh, in the other example we talked about, when you increase the surface area, you'll get more radiative loss. So we'll talk about this next week as well. Uh, heat storage, of course, is very important. In other words, once you have the heat, how do you keep it? Right? You don't want to lose it because you've got it. Uh, so this is referred to as thermal mass. It's the ability to retain heat. So the therm you want the thermal mass of this to be very high. So it just keeps the heat. Um, of course, higher thermal mass also means it takes longer to heat up. Trade-offs there. Uh, of course, you also want insulation. Uh, materials requirements. They're complicated, right? Even for this very simple system. Uh, you have all these different things. You have the glass or plastic up here. You have the whole structure here. Uh, you have the pot. Uh, you have some insulator to keep the pot. And then you have the air in between. So you have structural materials, which can be cheap, both cardboard, metals, bamboo, bricks, stone, plaster, tan, whatever. Uh, insulation, the whole thing must be insulated. Uh, aluminum foil, down for the cellulose, rice hulls, wool, whatever. Uh, transparent material for the top can be glass, hypertension plastics, carbon loosened bags, etc. Uh, these, of course, need to be moisture resistant if you want to put something because they generate water, so the inner walls must be protected. So it's complicated. You have to think about this. Especially, you have to think about it carefully if you want to make it cheap and durable. Okay. Very big challenge, engineering challenge. We don't necessarily think about this as high tech, but very important. Of course, there are other design considerations as well. Size, you know, or what amount of food. Does it need to be moved around easily? Cookware, you know, people like to cook in certain kinds of pots, certain shapes need to be fit in. That's, by the way, related to cultural issues. Right? You need to know different parts of the world cook differently, obviously. Uh, sunlight collection area, larger collection area, give you higher temperatures, as the heat loss is not increased, as we saw before. The solar cooker proportion. OK, so these are interesting questions. The square box better than a rectangular box? Maybe. Perhaps. By the way, this class should be pretty interactive. So like you can, you know, you can be, you can be wrong. It's okay. I'm, I'm wrong often. If you're not wrong, you won't learn. Right? Square box. It depends. I think. Right. Let's think. So if you have a square box and a rectangular box. And it's oriented, and let's say it's not tracking anything. If the sun is moving this way, which is better? Uh, or if the sun is moving this way, which is better? So if your axis aligned with the motion of the sun, the triangular box is better. If it's not, it's not better. So it depends a little bit. Also depends on the area of the loss. Right? So if the surface area of the rectangular box is larger than the square box, you could potentially lose control. More, more. So which direction should the rectangular box be oriented in the axis of the motion of the sun? Is tracking required? If you use the rectangular box, maybe not. Or you, maybe you can get, get away with tracking less, for example. Okay. 
very simple ideas, but it's important for us to think broadly. That's my goal to, 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 to do this. Uh, what are the challenges for adoption? Even if you build the best solar cooker, cheapest, works fantastic, it's durable, whatever, there still are problems for adoption. I mean, think about it. The taste of the food, if the food tastes bad, I mean, no one's going to use it. Right? The whole thing is a waste. So you've got to think about what the customer wants. This is the whole purpose of the business canvas that we will do. Uh, temperature control, whether you want to cook different things. You know? uh, what about cloudy days? You know, if you want to use this in um, northern uh, Quebec. But it's cold, but it's poor, and you still have a lot of sun, but you also have a lot of cloudy days versus you want to use it in Victoria. Cost, obviously. And of course, disrupting traditional gender roles because, uh, and this is an interesting story, is that in Africa, people actually started deploying solar cookers, but they were not successful because the, the, the men who controlled the, the village uh, economics were unwilling to let go of their gender roles because the women now had more time. They could leave the solar cooker out in the, you know, out in the field for cooking and they didn't actually have to cook for a long time, so they had a lot more free time. So women could do other interesting things. So gender roles got messed up. So they were not adopted. It's an interesting thing you don't think about. So anyway, uh, you got you know, as, as technologists, there are lots of things you can think about here. There are lots of opportunities, new market opportunities as the fuel prices rise. You could combine technologies with microcredit, incorporate solar cooking into home designs and so on. Okay, so that's basically my last slide. And I want to talk a little bit about the last five minutes, I want to talk about the, uh, the mentors. So uh, so we have three of them. You guys didn't see Sharon? Uh, she didn't, she, I forgot. She, she's not here? But she said she would try to but I didn't see her. Okay. So there should be four. Uh, so Aprithan, you want to raise your hand? Okay. So yeah, they're all PhD students in my lab with lots of experience, and Nabil, and Gan and uh, they will be meeting with you as teams. So your goal, for example, for your assignments is to practice your presentations with the, with the mentors. Remember it's 10 minutes or so, so it's short. Uh, and get feedback from the mentors uh, and guidance. Make sure you take advantage of their insights because they've actually done this class before. They've done all this stuff uh, you know, in their own research as well. So the idea, like I said before, is to meet about one hour each uh, during the weeks of September 12th, October 17th, and November 9th, as I put in the schedule. Once the teams are formed, I will assign the mentors, and I will introduce you, and you guys have to schedule the meetings yourself. Uh, same thing for commercialization mentors. Again, meet one hour each, and I will introduce them later, because we're not going to talk about that until later in the semester. Uh, again, October and Monday. Monday. So again, each team needs to coordinate meeting time, date with mentor. So, uh, that's basically the end of the lecture. So let's, uh, are there any questions? I mean, I'm going to stop the video. But.